How's it going everybody? In this video, I'm going to be addressing some common questions I've been getting a lot in regards to the recent Ninth Circuit ruling decision in Duncan v. Becerra. But real quick before we jump in the video, I want to thank one of the new sponsors of the channel and that is Franklin Armory. Franklin Armory, as many of you are familiar, is an amazing company out of Nevada. They have three uh, pistols that are currently on the California roster that you're able to go purchase through them, as well as they have the Title I, which they were attempting to put into California's market but has been blocked by the California Department of Justice. So Franklin Army is one of the new sponsors of the channel and I cannot be more excited to be partnered with them because they do amazing things for California gun owners. So as many of you are aware, last Friday, um, the Ninth Circuit issued their ruling in Duncan v. Becerra. If you're not familiar with Duncan v. Becerra, what that case had to deal with, that dealt with California Penal Code 32310. And in California Penal Code 32310 parts A and B, that dealt with the importation, manufacturing, buying, selling, of what is deemed large capacity magazines here in the state of California. And then subsection C and D dealt with the possession of those magazines as well as the penalties that went along with them. If you want a comprehensive video of what exactly has happened in Duncan v. Becerra, I have a video right here and you can click that and I walk you through some of the main questions that you probably have in regards to Duncan v. Becerra and the Ninth Circuit's ruling. So one of the first questions I'm gonna answer and I probably shouldn't have to answer because I already have a video out talking about this but that is whether you can currently go and purchase large capacity magazines or magazines that hold more than 10 rounds from companies online. Can you go to your local gun store or whatever and purchase these magazines? And the answer is no. Again, if you want a comprehensive uh, overview of why that is, I made a long video talking all about the process, all the legal explanations about why that is. But in short, that is because Judge Benitez has issued a stay his stay that was issued in the district court is still in effect. And until that stay is removed, you cannot go out and purchase these magazines. Another question that goes along with this is early on last Friday, when the decision was first issued and a lot of people were reading it, many companies like Brownells, Primary Arms, a lot of these companies came out and said that they were going to ship magazines to California residents. So a lot of you maybe went out and purchased these magazines, put in orders through these websites for these large capacity magazines. And like I mentioned in my last video, and what we've actually seen develop even more is pretty much all of these companies after actually going, talking to their legal counsels, reading through the decision by the Ninth Circuit, they've come to the determination that they cannot actually ship these magazines to California residents. So a lot of you are wondering, what should you do in this situation? Are you going to be in trouble because you put in these orders? And the quick answer to that is, no, a lot of these companies um, aren't shipping. You put in your orders, you're just put on hold. You're in a holding pattern. And what they're saying now is that once there is an actual decision or a mandate from the Ninth Circuit or a removal of the stay, that they will actually go ahead and ship. So a lot of you are asking, well, should you remove your orders right now? Are you gonna get in trouble because you put in orders? And in my opinion, I think you should be fine. The issue is once a company actually ships those magazines to you and you take possession of them, you are not only violating the parts C and D of Penal Code 32310, but you're also violating parts A and, uh, a and B, which does uh, which deals with importation. So once they actually ship them, that's when you get in trouble, but simply placing an order and being put in a holding pattern shouldn't cause you a lot of issues. But you should be fine, simply you're just in a holding pattern right now, which a lot of us anticipated because a lot of these companies jumped the gun. Another question I was getting asked a lot is, well, can you go out of state? Can you go yourself? not putting in orders to a company, but can you go across state lines to like Nevada, purchase magazines and bring them back in? What effect does Duncan v. Becerra's decision in the Ninth Circuit's ruling in Duncan v. Becerra, what effect does that have on that aspect or on that factual situation? And when it comes to that factual situation, you are still in violation of California Penal Code 32310 Part A because that deals with importation. This fact that you are not ordering online does not change that fact. If you're going across state lines and bringing those magazines back into the state of California, you are violating the penal code that is still in effect. Along these lines, another question I was getting asked a lot has to do with the manufacturing language and has to do with people asking, well, can I remove the pins out of my limited magazine? So a lot of you have these magazines that are pinned to 10 rounds, but have the ability, if you remove the pin, to go to 30 rounds. So a lot of you are asking, does the Ninth Circuit decision allow me to um, essentially take the pin out and make it a 30 round magazine. And the answer to that is no. 
that would violate California Penal Code 32310A and as well as Part B, which deals with manufacturing of large capacity magazines. The United Circuit's decision, again, did not remove the stay that Judge Benitez has. And the Judge Benitez stay, which he issued in the lower courts and the district court, said that he put a stay on his ruling on Parts A and B. Part A and B deal with manufacturing. So if you were to manufacture or take the pins out of these magazines right now, you are manufacturing and you're violating that penal code. So do not do that. And one of the last questions I've been getting asked a lot is in regards to California's assault weapons ban language. I've been getting asked a lot whether you can currently use large capacity magazines or magazines that hold more than 10 rounds in fixed magazine configurations because of the Ninth Circuit's ruling in Dungan v. Becerra. And when I read the various penal codes, my answer to that is do not do that because you will still be violating California law and you will be then be putting yourself in possession of what California deems an assault weapon. The Ninth Circuit's ruling in Dungan v. Becerra was targeted towards California Penal Code 32310, which dealt with the magazine capacity laws. It did not address the assault weapons ban language. And actually in their ruling and in their language, they actually said that their ruling did not touch on the assault weapons ban language or assault weapons or the language on assault weapons. So there they were pretty much caveating their, their ruling saying that they were not addressing any of that assault weapons language. Along with that, the unconstitutionality was targeted towards Penal Code 32310. It was not targeted to California Penal Code 30. 515A2, which is what deals with the fixed magazine language. Penal Code 30515A2 deals with a semi-automatic centerfire rifle that has a, a non-detachable magazine, has a fixed magazine, but has the capacity to accept more than 10 rounds. So if you were to put a magazine that has a capacity to accept more than 10 rounds into that type of firearm, it becomes a assault weapon. So the Ninth Circuit ruling did not affect that at all. So don't think that because of the Ninth Circuit's ruling, that you can now just go ahead and put um, large capacity magazines in those type of rifles. But one of the interesting things that I wanted to note here in this video is that does not mean that the uh, decision by the Ninth Circuit in Duncan v. Becerra will not have an effect on the assault weapons ban or some of the cases like Miller v. Becerra, which is pending before Judge Benitez, um, down the road. There was a lot of language in Duncan v. Becerra, which likely is going to be used by Judge Benitez if he rules in our favor down the road in Miller v. Becerra because in a lot of the language in Duncan v. Becerra dealt with that it is impermissible to ban a component of a firearm which is necessary for its operation. So they were applying that in regards to magazines. Now, when you look at the Penal Code 30515, which deals with defining assault weapons here in the state of California, not only in that part A1 does it have all those offending features that you're not allowed to have in a, in a rifle, which pretty much is an impermissible ban on some features which are necessary for the operation of that firearm. But also when you look at A2, it also targets magazines and magazine capacity. So there is a direct correlation to the decision in Duncan v. Becerra that can then be carried over into Miller v. Becerra because that magazine language carries over into both those, um, those cases. So I can actually see in Miller v. Becerra, Judge Benitez in his ruling, if he rules in our favor, which I would expect he does, citing directly to the three judge panel's decision in Duncan v. Becerra, talking about magazine capacity restrictions, imp impermissible restrictions on features of a firearm or necessary components of a firearm, which make it inoperable, which are necessary for the operation, things like that. I could see him directly citing to Duncan v. Becerra. So that just should answer some questions you might have and a lot of you probably do have in regards to Duncan v. Becerra. Of course, as things develop, maybe sometime this week, we might see some further movement on the Duncan v. Becerra case. So all of this may change. Of course, this is only current as of August 17th, 2020. So if you're watching this video down the road, you will wanna check to see if I have any other videos on my channel updating this information. But as of right now, that's kind of where we stand with the effects that the Ninth Circuit's ruling or the panel's ruling in the Ninth Circuit on Duncan v. Becerra, what effect that has had on California law. Before I end this video, I just want to thank a lot of you for showing me support over the last few days. As many of you are aware, and I mentioned in my last video, my dad has passed. Um, last week when all this came down on Friday, we were attending his funeral, so I wasn't able to get out a video as quickly as I wanted to you guys. But I just want you to know one of my priorities is to make sure that this channel keeps going that I continue to get you know, relevant information, answer your guys' questions, 
and really just help spread the word about the Second Amendment because my dad was one of the first supporters of this channel. I know he would want me to continue even despite all of what is going on right now. So I just wanna thank you guys for your condolences and your amazing comments and all the support that you have shown me over these last few days. It means a lot to me. I'm really proud of the community that we've built here and I can't thank you guys enough for all the support you've shown me uh, just over this last year. It's just been amazing. So as always, thanks you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.